Welcome back to the Wrinkled Engineer. I'm here again at my dad's with the senior Wrinkled Engineer. Uh, we're going to talk about some of his furniture and we're going to start with this amazing uh, rocking chair. This piece is, is pretty phenomenal um, and very sturdy and I, I, I'm always in awe when I see it and my dad built this for my mother. Um, so I don't know, do you want to start with the process? The concept, how long this takes. Well, I'm just a little introduction to the chair. This is based after Sam Maloof's uh, famous rocker, uh, and uh, it took me a while to build up the, the courage to undertake this. Uh, but uh, through some sequences of, of woodworking experiences, I got the confidence to give it a try, and and I was really uh, really pleased to to have completed it. Uh, it was about 12 months in build. Uh, you have an opportunity here where a local college, a state college as part of its charter, will uh, have, allow senior citizens to audit classes uh, tuition free. And so I audited the architectural uh, woodworking uh, class. Uh, they had a nice lab with a lot of good equipment and that's, I was able to, to, to do the work. Um, I didn't jump right into this. I had s several projects to build up to it because I wasn't sure about doing this. Uh, to me, a chair is an intimidating thing to build, uh, particularly the, a, a rocker like this. Uh, Sam Maloof was just a great craftsman. I had the opportunity to spend about an hour with him once and had a great time talking about woodworking and, and also his wife was there and she was really nice. Um, the, the chair is, uh, has major components, the seat, the rockers, the legs, and uh, the, the spindles, and the, uh, the headrest. And uh, we will probably talk later about those details and about how they were formed. But one of the, just the great characteristics of Sam Lewis furniture was it was almost exclusively walnut like this, and he had his own recipe for a finish. And anybody that's around his furniture, there's just a tendency to want to rub it. And, and I do that as well. It just is so nice. Um, the, the finish is, is by uh, a lot of, the shaping by a lot of filing uh, one of my favorite tools it was an angle grinder with a carbide uh, wheel on it, a mesh wheel, and that was used primarily to, to hollow the, the seat out. Um, I also used a, a die grinder uh, with a, a carbide burr to do some of the other shaping, and then finally uh, a nice coarse file, and then several thick uh, grits of sandpaper to get down to where the final sanding was with 420 and then um, finish that off with some triple lot steel wool before applying the finish so the wood was really smooth and it's walnut is such a a, a great great uh, texture to it it's also very forgiving uh, in the joints I've built some other things out of hickory and alder and and it seems like the walnut just the joints will just just become homogenous. There's some some interesting joints on on the, this chair, the, the bridle joint here, um, and, uh, and and one also at the at the back legs uh, that give it some uh, integrity, some, some some structural integrity as well as as uh, some aesthetic value. So there were things that I weren't, wasn't sure about in, in proceeding. I hadn't done them before, and rather than risk my expensive walnut, I did some mock-ups. This one is a mock-up of the seat. There were some, just five pieces that, that go together to make the seat. Is this six quarter? Uh, or is it? It's eight quarter. Eight quarter? Okay. Yeah. And so I, the, the cheapest wood we could get in the shop was alder wood, so I mocked it up out of alder wood. And uh, you see that the, the, the pieces are, have angled edges, so when they came together, they were 
concave and uh, wanted to, to test my, my router patterns on the, the bridle joints there and there. And, uh, and did you template this or what was the, what were the stops for your router? Trying to remember. Uh, did you just have stop here and here? Well, for, for, I did it before when this was a separate board before there was any shaping okay. in it. Um, so f I know for the back ones I've just used a, a, a notch, notch this with a saw. And then just followed it with a bearing. And then the yeah, bearing. I used a, a bearing on the, the router bit. And then uh, when, when it got time, I was, the chair was in build and, and I had fastened the headrest. I just wasn't sure about the shaping there. So just with some scraps, uh, I mocked up that joint there and practice shaping with it and was going to contour the back and then decided no I didn't like that so I kept the, the back smooth and uh, it gave me some practice plus some uh, some ideas about wh how I wanted to, to do the finish also during the build I <clears throat> this is the impressive thing to me went ahead and <laughs> constructed a the model a one quarter in, uh, inch to the foot sorry, one quarter inch to the inch uh, scale model. And that helped me in determining the shape, some of the shapings that I wanted to do. Uh, and also helped me understand the, the, the construction. Um, during the course of the class, I encouraged the, the students there to, to model their, their projects because you, you learn a lot, you find out what the problems are and you can make decisions on that. So. Uh, it was a lot of fun. I got teased for making doll furniture, but <laughs> it really isn't. It's it's a scale model. Besides the joints, because the joints are, are phenomenal. Just they're very clean, but like this joint just disappears. You can barely see where one piece ends and the other begins. What are some of the details, again, besides the flowing curves, um, any of the details that really make this thing special? Uh, the the rockers I think are are a, a distinctive feature. Uh, it's it's laminated, um, about eighth inch thick laminations, um, walnut and ebony. The the dark is is ebony. There's an ebony stringer here as well, and the very bottom one is teak uh, for its wear. And is this formed, bent, shaped? What's the lamination? How do you, how did you make that curve? My uh, my instructor at the at the college had this unique idea, and that was to use vacuum forming, like the, the to do with the veneering. So I on the CNC machine made a form that was actually a double form. So we we did both rockers at the same time that had this this contour. Uh, I sawed all of the the, the laminations strips. We uh, Glued them up. It was kind of a project with three of us, and and uh, glued them up, put them on the on the uh, the form, enclosed it in the bag, and pumped it down, and uh, it formed the it, it did form, form to it, uh, with the exception of this recurve back here that didn't quite bend down. It, it was sticking up, so we mechanically clamped those down at the last minute, and then. Kind of left it overnight. And let the glue do the do the work. Yep. And uh, in order to keep the glue from sticking to the the, the plastic bag, uh, it was all wrapped in paper. So I had glued on paper on all of this <laughs> that I had to, <laughs> to remove. Uh, and at that time, it was not it wasn't shaped. Not the those contours. Those came after I had. Uh, it was pretty much square edged when I fastened it to the chair. And then uh, uh, then did the shaping to, to blend it in, into the chair. Um, All these plugs, these are ebony, right? Right, there's actually, you know, there's screws behind them. Mm -hmm. and they, so they just, they, they uh, hide the screws, but I think it adds to the aesthetics of the chair and it's a, a Sam Maloof trademark. Uh, up here as well. When his chairs are exhibited, he'll he'll state the materials that are in there, and it's always ebony, even though if it's just the plugs. <laughs> it's interesting. Ebony is sold by the pound. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> it weighs enough. That, um, so one of the other interesting facets we is that, so has this come before or after the build? During. During, so yeah. after, yeah. after the miniature and before the big one or? It, it was two thirds done when I, when I did this. Okay. And the reason was, in this class that I that I took, the students do a senior project. Well, this was my equivalent of a senior project for three semesters. And so, when I was finishing it up, and and prior to the at the beginning of the semester, you give a presentation. And mm -hmm. so I, I did that for the the presentation to the class, and, and um, was able to. To show the the steps, the, the fabrication the, steps, yeah, the the components of it, and then that stayed up in the classroom during the, the year. Other kind of interesting things: is most of the wood is eight quarters, uh, the arms and the, the headrest are ten quarters in order to get the thickness yeah, there. And, and really, the ten quarters was in order to do this part here. Uh, I know at one point you had this padlocked. At the shop, yes, for fear of yeah somebody walking away with it. Yeah, at the at the point where it was near finished, I just didn't want to take any chances, so I had a bicycle chain lock and, and uh, kept it, it confined. And then when I started finishing it uh, and didn't want to put that on there, I kept it in the in the professor's office. Well, it is a very very impressive uh, piece. Very comfortable to sit in, and it, and it looks beautiful in the front room of their house. Um, any any other last comments or thoughts on? Yeah, well, you mentioned the comfort, and that comes from this kind of this lumbar support that's shaped by the, these you know, what were originally spindles. Uh, and then Sam Maloof had a client who had back troubles, and so he configured this for that person, and it turned out. He, he liked it, so he, that, that became his, his standard. These, these, when Sam Maloof was selling these shares, the price was $25,000. <laughs> and he would make them in, in units of six. And how long did it take him to fabricate? About a week. He was, when, in the time that I had with him, he, one of the things he told me is, to make money as a woodworker, you have to be fast. And his wife said, yeah, you're very fast. And when you see him work, he, he really was. Um, I, I've seen pictures of him where uh, the, the edge of the chair is with a, a round bit router and a round off router. And he would one hand it. So he's holding the router with one hand and he's routing like that. I would never try that. Uh, he also... Uh, essentially free cut on the bandsaw, the, the shapes here. He would hold them and he would twist them through the, the bandsaw. Uh, he didn't recommend anybody else to do that, but he, he learned to do it before he knew better. It's <laughs> amazing. All right, well, this is just the first. Um, we have several of these pieces to look at, but this is the most, this is the most impressive that you've done so far, correct? This is the most intricate? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for sharing this. Much appreciated. Again, this is Wrinkle Engineer, Senior Wrinkle Engineer. Thank you for joining us.